Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and this week I decided I needed to take several days to get caught up on finishing, actually finishing some projects. I have two quilts that need binding on it. I need to make a bunch of labels for quilts that are completely done. Um, I'm working on um, 12 Days of Christmas project that I need to finish that and I need to do some planning for 2021. So um, I don't have anything on the long arm today and uh, that's because I don't have a top to put on it. I thought I'd just kind of chat while I'm doing some binding and, and show you how I hand stitch my binding down. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the stitch that I do use when I am binding. There are several different stitches that you can use when you're binding a, cl a quilt and um, I've kind of changed my way of binding over the years. Um, I showed you my first quilt video, how I just pulled the backing around to the front, rolled over the, the uh, hem, and then machine stitched it down. Uh, of course, I didn't know anything about um, quilting, especially for show at that point. I was, you know, I was 17 years old when I bound that quilt. and. That's the only way I could figure out how to do it. So uh, that's what I did. And there's really nothing wrong with that. That works. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Only thing is if you want to enter your quilt into a show, um, that probably won't fly with the judges. So just have to keep that in mind. But anyway, I'm going to adjust the camera and get started on this um, binding and then show you the stitch that I use. Okay, this is the Tea Party quilt. and um, I've got the binding on it. I'm using the same fabric that I used in the sashing. This is a really dark green fabric. It's um, kind of a bluish green with a gold leaf in it. Um, one thing I want to start with begin to right off the bat while I remember it is I like to trim the corners of the quilt. So I'm going to get my scissors out of my little bag here. And what I like to do is I will pull the binding away from the quilt itself and get that out of the way because I don't want it to cut the binding. And I'm just going to cut a uh, little triangle off of there. It's like at a 45 degree angle. And that makes it easier when I get to this corner. It reduces the bulk in that corner and it makes it easier to make a good miter when I get to that point. So I'm going to start here on the close to the edge so we can do that first. Um, the color of thread, I usually will match it to what the backing is. Like there's a lot of contrast here. I've got uh, a white backing and I have this dark green um, binding, but you could do either one. And I really didn't look. Let me see if I even have a color thread that will come close to that. See the greens I have, this one isn't too bad. It's a it's a dark like a hunter's green or a forest green. This one would be too light, too bright. So I know this one would not. This is actually a uh, hand quilting thread. And uh, I'll stick that back. But this thread would work too. Um, I think it would blend in enough and not show. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try this just to see if it makes any difference. And I just cut my length of thread and I need to choose a needle. And I always go with a new needle. And so I have a package. Those are embroidery needles. Okay, here's some sharps. And this is, these are number sevens, I believe. Yeah, size seven and it, they're just for general use. I don't use um, sharps or um, I don't use shorts for um, sewing on binding. I just use an all-purpose needle and I go ahead and tie a knot at the end and I'll show you the thimble I am using now. I'm using these this plastic thimble. It's, um, it's rubberized. The dark green is kind of rubberized or silicone or something and but this lighter green is a hard 
material, hard plastic. I'm going to go into my fabric within that seam there and just kind of bury my thread. And then I'm going to fold over the binding and I'm going to take my first stitch and just go through the quilt and into the binding. And I want to turn this so you can see it. Now I'm going to go into and tug that a little bit tighter. Go in right next to where the thread came out and go about that's about a quarter of an inch or less than a quarter of an inch. Go through the backing of the quilt and into the binding and push it out and just give it a little tug. So do the same thing. Here's the thread sticking out here. Go into the quilt and come back out. So that's my binding stitch. It's like an applique stitch. And it goes pretty quick. I do this um, usually in the evening. If my husband's watching anything on TV that I want to watch, I'll sit up there with him. But he and I don't enjoy the same TV shows all the time. So if he's watching something that I don't care for, then I'll go in my office and pull up something on the computer and uh, watch a video or listen to a podcast or something and and uh, sew on my binding. So this is the dark thread, the green thread. Oops. And sometimes I poke myself in the in my thumb there. Okay. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to switch the thread. You can see, um, you know, the, even though this thread isn't the exact match, you can't see those, the thread from those stitches in there. So um, that's really good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tie a knot. And there are all different ways to tie knots. I tend to do it. I got a stray thread coming out here. I'm going to trim this off. This is a piece of the fabric. I don't grab my needle here. I'm just going to go tie a overhand knot and double it up. And then I'm going to go down right where that knot is formed into the fabric, come back out and then just tug it and then it pops into the binding. And so that's done. Um, a lot of people will do, you know, an overhand knot. Um, and that works also. So I'm going to grab another needle. I'm going to leave that one threaded because I think I am going to switch. But I wanted to show you what it would look like with um, a thread that matches the backing here. And this is just um, regular sewing thread. It's all-purpose thread. It's not anything special. Um, you know, you can use whatever you want. Some people like to use um, a thinner thread so that the, their stitches don't show. And um, there we go. But this, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. So, but actually, I think the green thread is what I'm going to go to because I really like how those stitches just, you know, they're not showing. So I like that. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, this is what I do when, um, you know, I run out of thread and I have to rethread the needle. I will go in here, pull the binding back, and just try and hide that knot and just tuck it under there. And just give that a little tug. That helps seed it into the fabric a little bit. Um, but this will show. There we go, that's a little better. So it kind of depends on the look you want. If you don't mind your stitches 
showing, you know, this is fine. But you can see here how those stitches are showing right, right in here. You can see the line of them there. They will show with the white thread. But there isn't anything wrong with that. Uh, with this method, since the thread is going into the quilt batting um, in the quilt sandwich, it really isn't going to show a lot. You're just going to see that little stitch. So I'm going to actually, let me show you another stitch. Um, when I first started binding, um, other than by machine, I would just do a whip stitch which, um, if I can remember how I did it. Okay, I have told it this direction. And this way, you know, your thread is going to show a lot. As I poke myself here. But this was, this is another way to do it. Um, and if you have the green thread, it's still going to show a little bit against the white. So that's another stitch that you can do. And then another one, um, let me get over here. Okay, instead of burying the stitch in the quilt, you're going to bury it in the binding. And to do that, you're going to go down between the fold of the binding, like that. Pull the stitch through, and then you're going to grab the backing fabric, come up through the binding like this. And then the next stitch, you're going to go down into the binding into that fold, come out. and then to take a, that little bite and come through. And I think I will change the angle of the camera and maybe you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to go into the fold of the fabric, right here, and then come out, and that's in the binding. And then I'm going to make a stitch up. And I'm trying not to take too big of a bite, but I'm kind of at an awkward angle here. And then push that through. And then come back down and do another stitch in there. That gives you more of a look like the beginning stitch that I did rather than this. This shows a lot and um, this shows very little. But I like this stitch a little bit better. So I'm going to switch to the matching thread and continue binding. And I'll show you how I get to this corner, what I do there. Okay, I am here to the, to the corner now. And what I want to do um, here is I'm going to go ahead and fold this out. Let me move my so I'm going to fold this out like here hold it flat and then bring over the corner now I want this edge to meet this one so I'm just getting my needle and I just pull it out until everything meets and then I'm going to take a stitch right there in that corner and then I'll do another one just really close to it. And that just kind of holds it in. I really need my thimble back on. Once you get used to um, sewing with the thimble, it's kind of hard to sew without it. Okay, so now I've got my corner. And let me do one more stitch here. I'm going to just do my regular binding stitch. Maybe I better do two, make sure everything stays where I want it to. And then I could show you that a little bit closer. And now this corner meets with that edge and so I've got a nice miter. So, and you notice the miter, the fold goes in opposite directions from your front and your back. 
Okay, I'm going to tie this off. I'm at the very end of this thread, so I'm going to knot it off and um, get another thread going, but I think I probably got a couple chores I've got to do. I've got it's lunchtime. I need to get lunch going. So okay, well. Let's pop that knot in there, and here, let me show you how this looks so far. Okay, this is what we've got. It starts um, up here, and I got this much done. So, um, you know, I've got to start. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I think I still got a lot of work to do, but you know, I will get get it done eventually. Um, um, I hope this was helpful um, and uh, if you like the video don't forget to click the like button subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up and um, you know comment below for me and uh, give me that'll you know give me give us all you know another idea of how to bind quilts because there's all different ways to do it um, you know, you don't have to do it by hand, you can do it by machine. So um, you can add piping, you can do, add rickrack, you can do all different kinds of things. You can just do an overbound. I've done um, little art quilts, you know, postcard type things, fabric postcards, where, you know, I don't do this kind of a binding on it. I just, you know, do um, a zigzag over the edge or a satin stitch or uh, surge it you know there's different things you can do so you know whatever works for you uh, you know I'd like to hear your ideas on on ways that you bind your quilt um, so in the meantime I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching for more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects click on the subscribe button I hope to see you again soon